God laid it on my heart to cut up my credit cards. Living the way that we've lived, single parents, um, child support, you know, I get a little bit of child support from my son's dad, but that's, that's it. You know, family helps when they can, but I really don't have a whole lot of that, so I was relying on the credit card. It was just a step of faith, a total leap of faith, and I actually have a video, a Facebook Live, and I just chopped up the credit cards, and I said, I'm not going to use them anymore. That was the first step, obviously. And then within just a couple months, four or five months maybe, God was like, okay, now I want you to come off food stamps, and I'm like, right gotta be kidding me. I'm like, okay, but God, you put the government there to help me. Like, you've given me food stamps to help me. And he's like, read your Bible. And I'm like, okay. There was those times where he just said, okay, you are not to be indebted to any man. Cut up the credit cards. I'm like, okay. So I go and cut up the credit cards. Uh, the government assistance, the food stamps, the same thing. That's not what the government is in place for. We, as the body of Christ, church as families, we are supposed supposed to support the widows and the orphans and nowadays the widows are the single parents whether by choice or default whatever that may be it was rough for a while and maybe still is a little bit in, in some ways but God has always provided um, we either made extra income uh, people would just randomly bring us food without us asking you know my parents or a neighbor or, or somebody would just randomly give us money or food um, I would have extra jobs pop up, you know, and say, hey, I need you. And I'm like, okay, this is great. So it's been, like I said, a couple years since we've not had food stamps. And I've had multiple people, family members, multiple friends tell me that I'm absolutely insane, that I should have credit cards, I have should have food stamps. Like, there's no reason as a single mom I shouldn't have all of those things. And I'm like, I appreciate your, your input. If I'm stuck in that cycle, then I can't break anybody else out of that cycle. You don't have to stay in that cycle, but it's going to take faith. It's going to take trust. It's going to take some work to break yourself out of that cycle. And I'm here to tell you that I've done it. And, and my kids are able to know that, you know, we're able to help people. Even, even in our situation, there's a, there's a place, Haven Place, uh, in Cleveland, Tennessee, that helps like homeless and, and not always homeless, but kind of not so well off people and things like that. And so we've served there several times. Um, you know, just getting my kids accustomed to other people's lifestyles and things like that. Just being able to, to go in there and pray for people and help them. We serve food and play games with them and things like that. Now that I'm, I'm out of that circle, I'm, I'm truly focusing on God and, and really b believing and knowing that He is my provider and He is my source. He is my provision. Even though it doesn't seem like it's possible, but I have such more of a peace and a hope. If this story inspired you, take the steps to change your life. The first step is always to say, Jesus, help me. Come On, Let's Go distributes hundreds of similar stories of lives changed by Jesus Christ. If you want to be part of this vision, go.